My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. So I am trying to figure out how much weight I have taken out of the boat of just fiberglass and foam and how much weight I've put back into it and where I've taken it out and put it back in. Why is that important to know? Well, we want to keep the boat balanced so that when it goes back in the water, the bow or the stern is not heavy so that the boat sits on its lines correctly so that the water is parallel to the water line of the boat. And so keeping a record of exactly where the weight has been placed in the boat or where it has been removed will help the naval architect to figure out what the distribution of weight in the keel should be when we go to redesign the keel. How are you doing this since you've already cut out so many parts and also fiberglassed in so many new parts? So I've kept a lot of the old parts that I've cut out of the boat and to figure out how much weight I've taken out, I'm gonna use these small pieces to calculate the weights of different sections that I've cut out. To, do, to figure out how much weight I've put back in, I'm gonna do something a little bit differently. Okay, so this is a piece of the cockpit sole. It's not the entire cockpit sole, it's just, uh, it's actually a third of it. And I know that this piece is 1.6 square meters and it weighs 18.2 kilograms. So I can figure from this that the cockpit sole weighed 11.2 kilograms per square meter that was in the cockpit. And so then from the drawings that I have of the boat, the original drawings, I know that the total area of the cockpit sole was four and a half square meters. So I just multiply that by that 11.2 kilograms per square meter and I figure out that the total cockpit sole weighed 51 and a half kilograms. So that's what I'm going to do for all the little pieces and parts that I don't have the whole section of that I can't just weigh. I have to kind of calculate exactly what it theoretically weighed. So this was the little bench that was in the cockpit and since I have them intact I can just weigh them and add it to the the total. So this is 22.2 kilograms. This is half of the main bulkhead. So we're gonna go grab the other half of it. So this is the other half of the main bulkhead. This is kind of tedious, honey. <laughs> yes, I should have been doing this the whole time and I'm pretty embarrassed that I haven't been. But in the future, Going forward, I will be weighing everything that comes out of the boat and weighing everything that goes back into the boat. Now that I've got all of the stuff that I've taken out of the boat weighed up and added up, I'm trying to figure out how much I've put back into the boat. So I'm taking these samples. I have a bunch of offcuts from things like this is the side decks, the cockpit sole, the hull extension up. And so I can use these samples to figure out how much each uh, part of the boat weighs per like meter, per square meter, and then just calculate exactly how much area of each thing I've put back into the boat. And do those sample pieces include all the laminations you put onto them? So, not yet. And so like, for instance, we just laminated over the entire side of the hole extension. And what I've done there is I'm, I'm just weighing the amount of fiberglass that I have. And then there are that I'm going to laminate onto the boat. And then I know that when I vacuum bag, I get about a one to one ratio of resin to fiberglass. And so then I can calculate exactly how much it's going to weigh when it's all done. If I have two kilos, if I'm putting two kilos of fiberglass onto the boat, that means I'm also putting two kilos of resin onto the boat as well. So I'm going to start keeping very close track of exactly how many grams of fiberglass and therefore how many grams of resin I'm putting into the boat. This 
So this little strip of the new doghouse roof weighs 3.8 kilos. So then you are going to extrapolate that to figure out how much the new doghouse roof weighs. Correct. So the new doghouse roof weighs 73 kilos. It's like 150 pounds. This is a sample of the cockpit decks, the side decks uh, that I'm weighing and that I'll figure out exactly how much they're adding to the boat with this little sample. So the side decks came out to 15 and a half kilos. Should have seen that jump. It was like one of those where she, her back like slipped and go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much to everybody for guessing how much weight has been taken into and out of the boat. The winning guess was 99.99 kilograms less now than it was before. And that was by Duckshot Productions. So congratulations to Duckshot. In a close second place was my good friend Don uh, down in Olympia. The Correct answer was 107 kilograms or 235 pounds lighter. A couple interesting things that came out of this were that the, do the old doghouse was almost 300 pounds. It was 135 kilograms that was taken out of the boat, which was heavier than I thought it was going to be. And I think it's all in the windows. The new doghouse is currently 145 kilos so 10 kilos heavier than the old one and it's not even close to done yet there's no windows in it it all it's not taped together the traveler bulkhead has a lot more fiberglass to go over it so the whole thing is going to be a lot heavier than the old one is all in all the boat will be heavier and we knew that going into it I'm trying to keep it as light as possible by doing, by using foam and doing vacuum bagging and using epoxy. But all in all, it will be a heavier boat, which is okay. That's what we knew that that would happen. I also wanted to confirm that the hand laid panels were heavier than my vacuum bag panels. And it, after I measured everything out, it came out that on average, a hand laid panel was more than a kilogram heavier per square meter than a vacuum bagged panel. Obviously I'm doing uh, different panels, have different layup schedules based on what I'm using them for, but overall I'm saving a lot of weight doing the vacuum bagging. Where are we at in the stern modification project now? What's left to do? Give us like the big picture of where we're at. The hardest part is over. We're getting down to details. What's left to do is I have to install the, what's, what Yanni's calling the inner ears, the swim step and the, this transom has to be taped together and then the side walls have to be installed. I got these, what Yanni are calling the inner ears. They're glued into the boat. They're pieces that were cut from the, I think they were cut from the ballast tanks. I've got them glued on already. The, they serve a couple purposes. One is they're gonna be the aft wall of this compartment, this little locker that will probably uh, have propane tanks in them but they're more importantly adding structure to this whole area where the chain plates are going to be attached to so it's just making this whole area a bunch stronger they're already glued in i just need to put one layer of 17 ounce biaxial tapes in the edges So I'm having to tape the back side of this bulkhead down below the deck here. So I made a little access port and I'm basically going to be coving or filleting and taping the back side of this by feel. So that's what I'm doing in here.
Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, no one will see it. I got this awesome new tool. It's an epoxy pump. This one I bought directly from Michael Engineering. Total Boat actually sell the, sells these, but uh, they were out of them at the time. And it is excellent because it is already calibrated to pump out exactly two to one ratio of epoxy, two parts resin to one part hardener. And it's just one pump, press the pump down and it squirts out the correct amounts from each nozzle there. And it's it's like the coolest new tool I've had I've gotten in a long time. You can't stop talking about it. I can't stop pump. talking about it. It's my it's my awesome new epoxy pump and I'm extremely, extremely excited about it. This is not a sponsorship. <laughs> this is not a sponsorship. This is natural excitement. Yes. Show us how it works. Just press the pump the lever down and it squirts out the epoxy. That's it. I'm in heaven. Apply. To build the rest of these parts, I first templated the cockpit sidewalls. There will be three compartments, the propane locker in the middle, the chain plate access aft, and the forward portion over the old sloped transom will probably be unused. I made another piece of fiberglass foam cord flat stock to make the walls. Two layers of 17 ounce biox for the outside and one layer of 17 ounce biox on the inside of a foam cord that's one inch thick. I cut out the walls and then cut out the locker doors for the propane locker and the access hatch for the chain plates. I fit the parts to the boat and made sure they were flush to the existing cockpit walls. Then I templated the shapes for the diagonal sides of the swim step. I cut these pieces out from the old cockpit wall parts that I took out of the boat. I sanded them down and then glued them in. So we've reached an exciting moment because you're gluing in the last piece to the stern modification. Yep. Last night we glued in these little side pieces of the swim step and this morning I actually put fiberglass on the, on the inside of those pieces and now it's time to glue in. We got one on each side to do, but the cockpit side walls are ready to be glued in. I'm just making thickened epoxy and going around the perimeter. It's gonna be glued to these. There's two bulkheads here to be glued to, as well as the transom piece. And so, yeah, it's very exciting.
Okay, so I've got this side glued in. I need to tape it in, which means I have to tape it from the inside in both this compartment and that compartment, but I'll do that later. So this is the locker that the propane will fit into. There's a hat. This will just be a fiberglass hatch that will fold down. And as you can see, there's a little tiny drain right here. This is for in case propane were to leak, it could drain out of this little hole. And then also uh, this access is for is to access the back side of the chain plate. There'll be just like a little pie high threaded hatch that goes in into there. It's very exciting to have this this piece in. So now it's time to go on to the next one. Did you say something about pie? Yeah, these these uh, access hatches that you twist in, they're called pie highs. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Stern looks great, honey. Amazing. Dance party back here. I just love it. And then the swim stuff. Just right here. We're gonna sit on the edge of that and dangle our feet in the water one day. So obviously I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It's not done yet. I still have to trim the edges, these edges around and tape the cockpit walls to the boat, but they're glued in, everything fits, it looks excellent. For now, I'm gonna be moving on to other projects. We have a lot of other projects on the horizon and uh, next week we'll be moving on to a different part of the boat. We have three new patrons to thank this week. Thank you so much to Jamie and Carolyn in New Zealand. They are getting their Beneteau 473 ready for cruising, and they plan to set sail in 2024. Super exciting. Jamie and Carolyn also know our friends, Pio and Ava, who actually, they are cruising friends. They left Seattle the same day as we did back in 2015? 17. 17. And um, they made it all the way to New Zealand where we met Jamie and Carolyn. So, small world. And thank you to Ken, who's in Cincinnati, Ohio. He has a, a Catalina uh, 25 I think that's uh, he takes really really good care of and sails around the lake there also gets to go and sail in Florida with his buddies down there sometimes so thank you again very much Ken and finally thank you to Simon who we have not heard back from yet thank you again everybody we'll see you next week